Hi guys and welcome to Stellar Uplift. This video is the first in a series of two meant as an introduction to space elevator technology. Today we're going to talk about the guidance system of the space elevator, whereas the second video deals with the climber structure. Onto the guidance systems. There are two main different ideas about space elevator guidance system. The older one, dating back from 1895, which was invented by Tsiolkovsky, the father of space elevator technology, is a tower structure. You can imagine the tower to be a bit like the Eiffel Tower because this is in fact what, what inspired Tsiolkovsky. But then having a tower as the guidance of the climber is not really practicable because any material we know of so far would break down or buckle under its own weight long before it could reach any substantial height. So this is why in the 1960s Atsunotov proposed another version. This one is using a tether rather than a tower. A tether, which you could also call string or thread, is a tension structure. That means it does not need to support its own weight. To keep the tether straight and to act as a guidance, you need to pin it down on the earth and on the other side there must be a counterweight, which is often called a skyhook. One method would be to anchor the tether to an asteroid, although towing an asteroid to Earth and securing it in Earth near orbit is much easier said than done. A more realistic and more conventional thought would be to build a space station instead. This space station has the advantage that it can have several uses at once. It could, for example, analogous to uh, ports at the mouths of rivers, uh, serve as a hub between Earth and the universe. Now look at the positioning of the hub. In order for the skyhook to not fall down to Earth, it needs to be positioned at least so far out that the centrifugal forces and the gravitational forces are equal. The further the hub will be positioned away from Earth, the greater the centrifugal will be and at the same time the gravitational force will also drop. So there is something called a geostationary orbit at about 36,000 kilometers where those two are equal and this would be the minimum height of the orbit. This is by the way the height at which lots of the weather forecasting satellites and telecommunication satellites are positioned in case that they are not allowed to change their position relative to Earth. It is possible, in case you wonder, to position the hub higher than those 36,000 kilometers. You could go up to a third of the distance Earth-Moon, which is approximately 100,000 kilometers. There's one problem for any spacecraft having gone past the atmosphere, and that is small meteors having not been melted down by the atmosphere, which collide with their bodies with the spacecraft and thus damage the hull. In order to overcome this potential hazard, Atsunotov proposed to construct the tether in a bootlace-like fashion. This has the distinct advantage that any small particles can pass through without causing any structural damage. Now let's move on to the material from which the tether might be constructed. Unfortunately, as of yet, there is no material strong enough to endure the great tension which is put on the tether. The one material which comes closest are so-called carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are made out of graphite particles, graphite atoms, which are arranged in such a pattern that is much stronger than normal graphite patterns and in fact as any other pattern which is known today. The long Sheets made out of graphite uh, hexagons are then rolled together to form a continuous tube. That's why it's called a nanotube. And this nanotube is what the tether consists of. We now come to the last stop on our journey. The tether is subject to sideward forces which will cause it to vibrate. And we would like to look a little bit 
in more detail as to the sources of those forces. For that we draw a schematic diagram of the arrangement. We have the earth at the bottom and then the tether going up with the skyhook on top. The surface of the earth, the wind speed is zero and from there on it increases in a parabolical fashion. This alone already causes higher tangential forces further up the tether than at the surface of the Earth. But what is more is that due to objects and obstacles which are close to the surface of the Earth, there will be some sort of turbulences of the wind. Those turbulences can't be really calculated even with the most advanced techniques. So they will account for some sort of random vibration as indicated on the right hand side. This vibration has to be dealt with. First of all, the material must be strong enough. And second of all, this vibration will affect the climber, which we will talk about in the second video, so that an appropriate uh, control system has to be put into place. If you would like to have this slide, please find the link in the description box. This video was a very brief introduction into guidance systems for space elevators and about factors by which they are affected. Thank you very much and we hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please comment, rate and subscribe. More videos to come, stay tuned.